Hi everyone, thank you for joining our presentation today and coming out. And um, well, I'm I'm Logan Fink. I'm a junior consultant here at um, Top Notch Consulting, and um, we're talking to you today about some some of the things that we do. Um, to start, you know, everybody knows that a compliment, ten compliments, um, compared to one negative uh, remark about you, you always remember the the one negative, other than the ten good things that people said about you. That's very similar to how business reviews work as well. 86% of customers who read bad reviews don't come to the restaurant actually. They uh, they avoid it just because of what other people say online and so having that good internet presence is huge for, for restaurants and businesses these days. Um, it's very important for managers and off the front, front office people to check those reviews weekly, um, stay on top of that to make sure everything's good from an online standpoint. Um, because that's that's money they're losing um, with not getting customers in the door, and um, it's crucial to keep to treat every customer very importantly, um, and always do your best effort and make the best food, be the best server, whatever the task is, but always do it the best you can because you never know, you know what review or what people might say, and that's money that you can lose. A little bit about our company at Top Notch. Um, it was started by our CEO, Bob Johnson, out of Savannah, Georgia, where he had a, um, a restaurant of his own, and he really wanted to master the customer service side of things and to create a great environment for people to come eat and enjoy food and hang out together. And he built such a, a great restaurant up, and it became a huge hotspot in Savannah. Um, and then about 12, past 12 years, or 12 years ago, he moved it to Atlanta to just grow his business and see uh, what other opportunities were out there. And it's been in Atlanta for 12 years and it's been doing um, doing great. Um, and that's kind of where our company started. Um, a little bit more about us. Um, we like to help the diamonds in the rough, the um, family-owned businesses, to grow them and show them how they can reach their full potential and really get their best foot forward and achieve their goals and dreams that they have for their business and their restaurant. Um, and at Top Notch, we, we definitely want to keep that family-owned um family owned first, you know, kind of really go after those family owned companies and businesses that, uh, they just need a little help, a little guidance. Cause at uh, top notch, we believe the best, um, best cooked meals are home cooked meals. So myself and my background, um, I've been a junior, five years here as a junior consultant at top notch. Um, before I started with top notch, I have, uh, I worked with my at my parents' restaurant, another family-owned restaurant, um, and I also have a master's in finance as well. And I've since I've been with Top Notch, I've turned around several different restaurants with different types of solutions, different ways to to kind of to get through to the next level on things with new ideas and stuff like that. And uh, working on both sides of it, having having worked in a restaurant, a family-owned restaurant, you kind of see what works and what doesn't work and what needs to be improved and really just see the good and bad, What like see the bad side of things and the good side as well. And um, I think that has helped me a lot with this, just knowing the ins and outs and kind of the behind the scenes stuff that not everybody does. As well as having a finance degree, um, it's good for you guys because I understand how money works, how to how to do the income statements, balance sheets, all that good stuff, and really understand both sides in the restaurant and then um, in the books as well with, with the money side of things. So that's kind of my background, and um, that's why it's beneficial from my background for you, um, knowing that I see both sides and understand what works and what does not work with the, with the restaurant business. And a little background on um, Southern Kitchen and Grill. Um, they've been in business for about six years now. Um, they are um, they are focusing in barbecue, southern food, soul food types types of food like that. Um, some of the main menu items are fried catfish, um, fried chicken, and uh, ribs are pretty much the staples on the menu. Um, they're located in Atlanta, Georgia, off of Presidential Parkway. Um, they're locally owned, family run business, kind of our target market that we look for with um, restaurants and things like that. And they've made some good revenue on things. Um, the online presence has been some good and bad comments, um, and we have a few things that we can offer to kind of clean that stuff up. A couple competitors um, in the area, um, a Mexican restaurant called La Pastorcita, 
um, it's authentic, affordable Mexican food, but that is as well as family owned and operated. Another one is called the Whiskey Bird. Um, family owned and operated, they do breakfast and a brunch, um, large variety on the menu, and serve um, alcohol and are very vegan friendly. Um, it's just a little bit about Southern Kitchen and Grill, um, locally owned, family run, things like that um, in Atlanta, Georgia. Southern Kitchen does some things very well. Um, they have an extremely friendly staff. Um, many reviews rave about um, all the staff greeting them as soon as they walk in the doors. Um, they make homemade food fresh every day, and they give very generous proportions on the reviews that I've read. And uh, you don't leave there hungry. Um, they have a large variety on the menu. Um, as mentioned earlier, some of the staples are fried chicken, catfish, and the ribs. Um, but they also have family-sized meals to order to, that feed family of four, family of six, things like that, that you can order in, in larger portions, in larger sizes um, for those family gatherings and events and things like that. And they also have a very clean um, restaurant environment inside, um, a very good health score, just a good environment to to be in and hang around, hang out at and, um, and eat at. So those are some of the strengths that um, Southern Kitchen and Grill does well weaknesses um, in Southern Grill. And in the slide, you can see some um, some quoted um, reviews in the slides as well here on this screen. Um, some of the complaints or the weaknesses they have in their restaurant is the food is very expensive compared to taste. Um, many reviews talked about that and you can see that in the slide. Um, there were long waits to get food ordered or get food out to you um, and things like that. The waiting times were longer. Very limited vegan options, which is becoming a bigger and bigger thing now um, in our in our restaurant environment, and very, many inconsistencies with taste and the uh, seasoning of food and just how it all tasted. Um, so we have some some things that we believe that can help them clean up these weaknesses and even turn them into strengths. Um, just kind of ironing out some of the little things that they're um, struggling with and. It's very common for restaurants to not just always be top-notch, pristine, things like that with, um, I mean, every restaurant's gonna have weaknesses and you just gotta find the weakness and then address it as needed. Um, and we have some, some good, good options for them to address these issues. Top-notch, obviously our main priority is to find these weaknesses and these strengths and build on the strengths and improve the weaknesses. Um, and we've come up with numerous ideas from all across the board, many different recommendations that we have for Southern Kitchen and Grill to take the next step forward and really improve their restaurant and their overall um, experience and quality for customers and keeping these customers coming back as well as reaching new customers. And that's always very important for business to keep returning customers coming back happy and then also finding those new customers as well. And in the next few slides, you'll see some of the recommendations that we have um, to build on that for you guys. Two of these recommendations that um, we've come up with for Southern Kitchen and Grill are potentially adding a second location or um, for them. Um, the revenue they've created, they've earned over the last few years has been about five million dollars. So they're definitely doing something right, and they have uh, they keep customers coming back. Um, but you know, adding, adding a second location, it can be costly at first, but it could also benefit very, very much in the long run. Just, I mean, you're serving twice as many people, you know. Um, so that's one of the recommendations that we could do is adding that second location for them. Also, creating an efficient supply chain for food ordering to decrease some of the pricing problems that they have. Um, you know, getting a, a consistent order out weekly or whatever it may be. Um, doing that and having that having that process really measured out and getting exact numbers, correct estimates and things like that can go a long way in keeping price down from from buying it from the um, manufacturers, p p people like Cisco and things like that. So if they can get that efficient supply chain for the ordering, um, that's another good way to decrease the price, which can again earn more money for them. And adding that second location is another thing that's another way for them to to earn more money and reach new customers and new people. Another couple of recommendations that we've come up with here at Top Notch are getting an internet presence um, or a marketing presence to reach those new customers, to reach new people, whether it's through 
billboards or flyers on in the street or things like that, as well as an online marketing presence as well, just to create kind of a, a buzz and a following for Southern Kitchen and Grill. Doing this can reach new customers and keep the old ones coming back in, like I said earlier. Um, and this is another great way for them to grow, grow to reach, to earn more money and reach new people, and creating that just a little bit better marketing. Um, for them just to really get out in the community and spread the word about what they got going on there is a great way for that to happen. Another thing is to to measure ingredients and consistent cooking um, techniques that they have because that is one of the issues they have is consistent food coming out tasting the same. So if you have all those ingredients measured out, how much to use, when to use, how to cook, at what temperature and things like that, that's a great way for them to, to keep everything tasting the same no matter who's working the kitchen. Um, because it shouldn't matter, you know. I mean, people go in expecting their chicken to taste a certain way, or the ribs to be a certain way, and that's how that's how they should get it. So doing things measured out and very detailed, um, it might not be fun at first, but you know, it's what it's what's going to help the business grow, and that's one thing that I think will help them get that consistent food every time. That's that I've noticed or come up or seen for um, Southern Kitchen and Grill. Um, the rise in the minimum wage, you know, in small businesses like that, it's tough for them to, to, to take that hit and keep rolling with as many people working as they have. Um, cause right now there are about 25 employees, um, and raising that minimum wage would basically double how much they have to pay all of their employees, which is a huge hit on the bottom line for, for small businesses like this that are family owned. Um, so maybe that rise in minimum wage is a, is a tough hit that they have to take, but I think that's one of the threats that could affect them, as well as um, just competition. Um, Atlanta's a busy city, a, a, a very growing city, and just new competition coming in like that and, and taking those customers away and restaurants have similar similar food that Southern Kitchen and Grill does is a, a, a big threat for them as well. Um, so those are two threats that I see for them, um, but the minimum wage is one that could really hit them hard, just being a small business like that. and having to have uh, payroll be twice as what they thought it was with the same number of people. Um, so that's one of that's, those are two of the threats that I see for them right now. But, um, that I could see possibly see for them is the uh, is global supply chain issues and food shortages um, in our country. Um, you know, there's, there's some things going on in the world where it's hard to get supplies and get food from your supplier. Um, you know, supply chain issues are are crucial right now for some small businesses because they're not putting out those big orders that some of these other businesses are, and they're not getting their orders met. And the food shortages, you know, I mean, those are two. Th that's one thing that can really affect them um, in the short term as well as in the long term. You know, not having enough food to get through a day or a week or whatever it may be. Um, so that's another threat that I see for them slide is a slide that shows the SWOT analysis that we've done for Southern Kitchen and Grill. It's got the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that have been mentioned before. And this is just a chart for you to go back and look at if uh, you need some clarification on things. Um, this is a great chart to look at because you can see everything clearly organized and clearly displayed for, for you guys to see and what, what we see for you guys as well. Um, some threats, the opportunities, weaknesses, and strengths that we talked about before.